Morning. Well, we've had our walk in the woods already, but uh, you weren't with me because um, my iPhone you know, got all jammed up and uh, I've had a heck of a time. So I've resorted to the um, internal video here on my desk, uh, desktop iMac. So this morning, uh, what I talked about up there on the hill was these are going to be very challenging times for us, I think, as we are called to, to really live our values. And one of the great values of this country is that we are one nation. And we say that in our Pledge of Allegiance, that we are one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. So now we're going to have to really make sure that we are that kind of a nation. And this is going to be a time where we're all going to be called to some type of public service. Because if we're going to keep this virus down, we're going to all have to work together, uh, be distant for a while, and uh, put the best minds of this country together to see how we move forward. But um, last time we talked about, um, about this book, uh, Restoration Point, and the uh, five chapters in there that talk about uh, my early days and poems from about 60 years ago and then going on to meeting Sabina and the change that that was in my life 40 years ago. Um, Sabina's uh, diagnosis of cancer in, uh, in, in 2008 and then, um, and then uh, our son's suicide in uh, 2010. And the last chapter uh, talks about some poems and talks about the homestead and being out here in this beautiful, unglaciated area of southern Wisconsin. So I shared uh, some of those um, early poems with you last time, and now I'd like to talk to you and share with you some poems that, uh, that I wrote um, in my experience with Sabina in the early 1980s and how that uh, you know, changed my life. Uh, Thomas Merton and his biographers talked about uh, him as a as a Trappist monk in a monastery, having some medical problems, being in a public hospital, and falling in love with a nurse there, and how that experience of his uh, helped him understand uh, his love for God and, and and gave some 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 meaning to it. Um, so when I first read his book uh, Seven Story Mountain back when I was in the Marines, uh, it, it impressed me, and uh, Merton throughout his life. Um, greatly impressed me as a as a scholar and as a and as as really a budding saint. So here are a few of those um, poems from the courtship uh, of Sabina with Sabina. First poem is called Today. Today while I was alone for a whole weekend. I spent it looking for a quiet snowstorm place to be with you. I found such a place and it made me happy. There's a place in Northfield where as she grew up we would visit her parents there uh, throughout the years. It was called the Ideal Cafe. The Ideal Cafe, drinking coffee, listening to a player piano, sounds remembering sounds of you a few hours earlier, the closeness we enjoy, our passions encompass all our activities as we explore, know, and confirm each other. The next poem, and this is the uh, contrast between a, a poet guy like me who, whose love language is words uh, trying to woo <laughs> a woman who I found out, we found out years later her love language was acts of kindness. <laughs> so her words didn't quite mean the same, but words were for me, and there are some words I really wanted to hear. So I wrote this poem. I'm sure you said, I'm sure you said I love you. I heard it in your eyes, listened to your body, whispers, from your loins. I'm sure you said I love you, though I didn't hear a sound. <laughs> a 
And then there was that time of um, the major change inside of me and, and the whole business of, of being divorced from a 15-year marriage and the pain of that and then and trying to you know, rebirth oneself. And um, the poem that said, I'd rather be a poet. I'd rather be a poet than what I am today. I'd rather be a feeling expressing man than what I am today. I'd rather be a poet and tell you who I am and how I feel and what you mean to me. You'll love me as a poet, a carefree, loving man. Then there was um, the last time I cried. Last time I cried when I made love with you, I couldn't help it. Because you helped me trust, I couldn't help being like a child again. Because last time you really touched me and brought me forward light years and put aside my anger, pain, and self-protection. And I trusted you, a woman, the first time in over 20 years. And the trust continues as we uh, journey today through Sumina's cancer and dialysis, and um, it's a good life. And here's a poem from uh, our little farmstead out here, which we um, bought early into our relationship in 1980. It's called A Quiet Late Fall Morning. A quiet late fall morning, and we found ourselves in Walnut Hollow by the New Journey Farm. And there on that crisp fall morning, we pressed into our newly purchased earth in our moist, warm hands. Our bond, our seal, this quiet, late fall morning. Last poem has to do with um, vacationing in Florida in the wintertime, getting away from all the, the weather, when we were young. When we were young, we ran along sandy trails one early morning in Florida, winding through head-tall beach grass, which brushed our face as we ran, hearing the pulsating surf, the waves rolling and boiling, rolling and broiling. Their crashing, repetitive sound awakened a familiar hunger in both of us. And we fell into the deep sea grass, our sand-encrusted bodies, now in syncopated rhythm to the surf only yards away. Well, that's um, a little bit of sharing, pulling back some of the uh, onion skin. I'll sit back and have a little cup of coffee with you this morning. So we'll continue these journeys, and um, I'll try to find some technology so we can get up in the woods again, especially during Holy Week when... But I'm going to invite you to join me for those journeys of uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then an Easter morning uh, sunrise service up on our North Bluff. God bless you. Take care of one another as we move forward in these times of crisis. Blessings to you. Good day.